into dark places. But he has called us so that he can bring us out of darkness and he can translate us from this kingdom called darkness. Because if you're in the earth, you're living in a kingdom. I know that's hard for our American mindset to grasp because we're used to a democratic society, a society where there's government, where there's a president and a vice president and so on and so on. And we're used to them ruling for us. But in foreign lands, and especially in England, they have a queen who rules over all the people. It is called a kingdom and they must abide by the, the desires of the queen or the king. And in this case, it's the same way in the kingdom of God. There are two kingdoms. It's a kingdom of darkness or a kingdom of light. And so when God says he has chosen you, everybody say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. Say, I'm special. I'm special. Come on, just do that really good. Say, I'm chosen. chosen in the darkness. So whatever your circumstances are in life, if you have darkness in your life, if you feel like you're going round and round and round the mountain over and over, making the same choices over and over, making the same bad decisions, then you might want to say you might be living in the wrong kingdom, okay? So he chose you while you were in darkness. Everybody say darkness. Darkness. <laughs> I was chosen in darkness for a purpose. Now, what does that word chosen mean? That word chosen means that you are the object of divine favor. Wow. Who knows what favor is? Favor is when you get that right job, you know, that you were you were going for. Or favor is, you know, when uh, just uh, somebody hands you a million dollars in that favor. Wow. You know, favor is when you're without groceries and somebody rings your doorbell and you go to the door and there's a bag of groceries there. And, you know, favor is when something is being extended to you by choice. So this morning you have been chosen, which means that you have, when you understand you've been chosen, and when you understand that you're chosen to come out of darkness into light, then God is saying, I have favor I want to dispense on you, but I cannot dispense on you as long as you're in the kingdom of darkness. Does that make sense? I want to make it real simple. You are chosen while you're in darkness. And, you know, as an adjective, that means that you were chosen or you were selected either to receive something special. Another definition says you're selected or marked for favor or special privileges. Has anybody had a Jesus high? Anybody know what that is? I don't see many people there saying they do. So I just want to tell you, a Jesus high is when all hell is broken loose against you and you still have peace and joy and you have something inside of you that says, I don't care how sorry this is. I don't care how dark this is. I don't care how it looks like nothing is going to work. But I have been chosen by God. I have been marked for divine special favor. Isn't that awesome? that they've been chosen for that family, you know, for that favor. So we live way down here, always in the mully grubs, always needing somebody to pray for us, always needing this or always that. But because I'm chosen by God, I am special. Don't you think I'm special? Go ahead and touch me because you know I'm so, you are so special and you are so special. You're flipping dips, I'm telling you, and then the cold came in. Did you see that? Where were they having so much fun? They were having so much fun in the house of the Lord using God's favor on 
children to touch their lives. You know, we had, I don't know what night, Thursday night was Salvation Night, and I want to tell you something, there were a lot of Bible schools going on this, this past week. It, it's just miraculous that we had as many as we had and were able to deal with those children every night this week. And on Thursday night, we had the huddle groups. You saw them in the corners. And their job was to tell them the story of salvation and see if they wanted to invite Jesus in their heart. And you know what? Then later on, we had another uh, time where we asked ever, all the kids again, and do you know that every child in the house came up to the front, even with some workers and some teenagers were in the front, and every child came up to the front. Why? Because they were chosen by God for this week. You don't know what their life is at home. You don't know what, whether they live in light or darkness in their family. You don't know whether they have food. You don't know any of the circumstances, but God chose them this week to come into his favor so he could translate them out of whatever darkness they are in as little children and bring them over into the kingdom of light. And then he gave us the benefit of being able to even extend more favor on them. See, God's chosen you. Some of you have run and run and run and run you know, away from God because you don't really understand how the workings of the kingdom of God is. I just want to tell you that what we see in the established church today is not the kingdom of God, okay? There are some in there that understand kingdom, but I'm here today to tell you that God is going to break through this congregation and we're going to understand who we are, that we have been chosen by God and we must not waste that position of favor. Because he's given you a position of favor. If you don't believe it, just ask him. The second thing he tells, he said, you didn't choose me in John chapter 15, verse 16. He said, but I chose you. So God again is speaking to you here this morning. And he's saying, you may have never thought you would ever be in this place you are Sunday morning at this time, but here you are now, and I chose you before you went in your mother's womb, and I let you go your way all this time, but now I am positioning you to get in a place of favor, divine favor. And so God chose you to be here today so that you would know, number one, he loves you. He will never leave you alone. You can run and run and run, but you cannot hide from God. Uh, so, you know, He's a good God. He's a good Father. He's chosen you because He loves you and wants you for His own possession. You say, well, what does that mean? That means that He loves family more than anything. And in a good family, there's lots of love, there's correction, sometimes there's discipline, but there's all lots of love. And that's what Jesus is calling you. He said, before you were born, he said, I chose you. And John 15, verse 16, he said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Now, what does that mean? Well, can I use can you and Joe? That'd be okay. They're bearing fruit. <laughs> you see their wee ones? That's fruit, right? So that's a form of fruit. So in other words, when Natalie and Joe's children, as they continue to grow up, then everything that mom and dad has been chosen for is going to be reproduced in those children. Now that's a pretty heavy thought, isn't it? It kind of makes you think, well, why did I have kids? You know, some of us may think that now with our own kids, but the grace of God is still covering them, right? But, you know, God chose you so you would be fruitful and you would multiply children into darkness. Do you want your children in darkness? No. Do you realize that your children are going to pattern themselves after you? And if they see you in darkness, dabbling in darkness, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to say, it's okay, daddy does it, mama does it, and so a little bit's okay. Is that what 
you want them to know? No. And that's the way our Heavenly Father is. When He sees us as His children chosen by Him for favor, and then He sees us living beneath our place in Him, then it has to make Him very sad, wouldn't you think? So it's important for you to produce fruit. Everybody knows that a peach tree does not have apples on it, right? And a grape tree doesn't have oranges on it. And there's been all kind of people messing around with that, you know, with genetics, trying to crossbreed and cross switch and, you know, put all those different varieties of fruit together and coming up with these uh, crazy names and all that. And I guess that's one way to bear fruit. But you know what the best way is just to bear fruit of your kind. So if I love, sometimes I don't love, okay? Sometimes I'm mean as a snake, you know? Sometimes I'm blaming the snake, you know, because sometimes love just doesn't work in me too good. But when I love, I love everybody. I want to hug everybody. You know why? Because I was raised by my daddy and my mother, and I never saw them go anywhere that they were not shaking your hand or loving your Six of us, matter of fact, and some of us got love, and some of us got other things, but, you know, we still got what they gave us. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what Daddy God wants to do today. He's choosing you not to get into the rut of church and the routine of coming in and going out, but he's chosen you for his divine favor so that you can produce something in your family of the same quality and kind and characteristics of Daddy God. Daddy God, you know, when I grew up, he was me. <laughs> Anybody out there? You know, if I wore shorts that back then, that was that was we were going to hell. I mean, we were going to hell in a handbasket. Okay, you know, if we wore lipstick, that was a sin. Everything we did in life was a sin, and I grew up under that in the church. But thank you, Jesus, see my little tights this morning. I am free. Why? Because I chose not to grow up under legalism and the law. And what I do is I serve Daddy God because I found out he didn't carry a big stick all the time ready to whack me on the head when I did something wrong or messed up. And so it's important to know that he loves you. Now, he will discipline you. He will discipline you, believe me. And, but it will be a discipline that will get your heart and your heart will be broken because you disappointed your daddy God. And see, that's what he wants you to know today. That he's, he is a father to you. And he has chosen you before the foundations of the world. He chose a way to get to you in your darkness to translate you into his light. Isn't that powerful? Okay, I'm done. I feel like I'm done. I feel like there's a whole lot more in that passage of Scripture, but I feel like today that somebody needs to know that you are loved. And you may not have experienced love in your lifetime, or maybe maybe you grew up and you didn't have the best families. Everybody doesn't have good families, so it's hard to, it's hard to say. You know, sometimes it's hard to relate to a father like God when you, when you didn't have a good father. You know, or maybe you didn't have good growing up relationships with your brothers and your sisters. You know? And that would be like your relationship with Jesus, because Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So if you didn't have good relationships in your family going on, then it may be hard for you to understand what a real family is like. But it's really easy when you just yield that to Him. So I want you to bow your head this morning. I, we're not going to stay, but just another moment. And I just want to ask you this question. Do you know you've been chosen? I want you to answer that in your heart. Do you know you've been chosen? And if you know you've been chosen, have you allowed Him to move you out of darkness?
into light? <coughs> Have you moved from one kingdom to another kingdom? We'll let that go out the room before we keep on so we can bring our attention back. Amen? Okay? So let's come back into focus. If you know you have been chosen by God and your answer was yes, God, I know you have your hand on me. I know you're searching for me. I know you're looking for me. Then answer the question, have I allowed him to translate me from darkness into light? And if you have not this morning, then this is your moment. Because all it takes is a simple yielding of your heart that says, God, I want to be everything you want me to be. I'm tired of living in darkness. I'm tired of going around the mountain over and over again. It's a question I want you to settle with him, not with me. So I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. I'm giving you an opportunity to yield to Daddy God and move from darkness into light. Once you've made that decision, see, it's your, your choice. <clears throat> Are you walking in the light? Can you walk in the light? And the answer is yes this morning. You can walk in the light. Amen.